What's up YouTube? It's me Jess and I'm an opera singer. Today's video was handpicked by one of our 100k giveaway winners. Congratulations to Javier. This is Juan Gabriel performing Amor Eterno. Let's go. Quiero dedicar esta canción con mucho amor y respeto Más que una canción es una oración de amor que quiero dedicar Como siempre, con el mismo amor, cariño y respeto A todas las mamás que esta noche me han venido a visitar Sobre todo para aquellas que están un poquito más lejos de mí Y de mis ojos que lloran en silencio por tu amor Me miro en el espejo y veo en mi rostro El tiempo que he sufrido por tu adiós Obligo a que te olvide el pensamiento Pues siempre estoy pensando en el ayer Prefiero Estar dormido que despierto De tanto y tanto que me duele que no estés Como quisiera Que tú vivieras Que tus ojitos jamás se hubieran cerrado Voy a estar contigo para seguir Mucho por tu ausencia Desde ese día hasta hoy No soy feliz Y aunque tengo Y muy tranquila mi conciencia Yo sé que pude Y sé que pude haber yo Hecho más por ti Oscura soledad Estoy viviendo yo La misma soledad De tu sepulcro mamá Kind of pause, kind of pause. Mmm. The lyrics are so, 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 so sad. I will go through some of the lyrics and translate them for you. I have never heard this song nor seen this performance. I have listened to quite a bit of Spanish music just because um, I was around it a lot growing up. However, if you told me that something I had listened to in the past and that I had no idea who it was, was Juan Gabriel. I wouldn't be able to put a name to the voice. Um, I'm just not 
very fluent in a lot of Spanish singers and their repertoire. And that's something I definitely want to work on. The winner of this video did tell me that this song was written by Juan Gabriel after his mom passed away. With that being said, let's just dissect some of these words um, for those of you who do not speak this language fluently. The very first two lines, Tu eres la tristeza, ay, de mis ojos, que lloran en silencio por tu amor. Which translates to, you are the sadness in my eyes that weep in silence for you love. What a tear-jerking sentence right off the bat of this song. These lyrics set the tone of pure, deep sadness, deep longing, right at the very beginning of the song. And I think that's really important to take note of because it's a song that gets to the point right away. Not all songs do that. Some songs lead up to something that is very tragic. Other songs may not tell you something very tragic until like the last few lines. This one is one that's telling you immediately how deeply sad this person is and how much this person is longing for someone. You guys, the way he's saying the first two lines makes it that much more gut-wrenching. He's got this authentic, I'm grasping your attention type of voice. It's something that is not easy to obtain. And I feel like he's just got this naturally because he genuinely believes in the words he is saying and because he is just naturally very good at singing. The first thing that made the way he's saying these lines very sad is the natural cracks within his voice. If you noticed, he didn't sing the line throughout. He didn't sing every note connected and he often took breaks in between the phrase breaking up the sentence as a whole, which is totally fine to do as long as it's expressive, which his was. Tú eres la tristeza y de mis ojos que lloran en silencio por tu amor. So the very first two words, tú eres, you noticed he did not sing that with chest voice really at all. He just came in on those two words very light, very delicately, um, almost as if he was just trying to whisper it. And then right after that, he went right into uh, some pretty heavy chest voice compared to the first two words on la tristeza and then ay de mis ojos. If you notice the difference between those two, it really brings a different type of drama to the different phrases that he's singing. And then he kept that chest voice going on on the word que lloran, and the way he sang the word lloran was so sad. And also what helped with that was the way he looked on his face. Oh, it was just sad. Oh, oh my god, I can't get over that line. It's so good. Obligo a que te olvide el pensamiento. Oh my god, man. He jumped up to an A4. Just beautiful, straight to the tone. This is a tenor voice I love to hear where the high notes sound effortless and I've said this in Oh Come All Ye Faithful by, by Voctive with EJ as the tenor. I really dive into the tenor voice in that video. But what makes the tenor voice sound so satisfying is when you listen to the highest note that they're singing and can still understand and hear other notes within that singer's voice higher than the one he's singing. To me, that's what relaxes me as a performer when listening to a tenor voice. Otherwise, tenor voices make me really anxious, they make me feel uneasy, and they kind of 
freak me out sometimes just because they have so much at stake. They use an immense amount of chest voice compared to any of the other voices, which makes it so unnatural. Yes, we use chest voice when speaking, but once we move up to a certain level within our range, it just makes adding chest voice up there so much more difficult because you have to find that balance between just not yelling but making a beautiful resonant sound. To me, huh, that's what makes the tenor voice so difficult, but his is so easy to listen to. Man, that high A4, I could hear. I can hear all of those notes really well within his voice. Now, I don't know how high he can go, but an A4 is really high for a tenor, especially with that amount of chest voice. What I think what was great also about this line was how pure that vowel was on that high A4. Despite the note being very high and despite the fact that he's bringing up so much chest voice, he kept that E vowel super pure. And if you don't know about vocal technique, the higher you go and the more chest voice you add up in that higher register, the more difficult it is to bring out closed vowels. E is a very closed vowel and it's not a forgiving vowel when you go up in your higher register. And so you'll often see singers um, modifying the vowel in order to just be able to sing the note. This was one of those exceptions where it just sounded so pure, so good. There are just too many good moments in this performance. Let's talk about the chorus. The chorus goes, Como quisiera ay que tú vivieras, que tus ojitos jamás se hubieran cerrado nunca y estar mirándolos. The way he sang his lines almost made me break down because of his phrasing. So the como quisiera, he said como and then took a breath and then sang quisiera. Estar dormido que despierto de tanto y tanto que me duele que no estés. Como quisiera. And I think that was really effective because of what it means, how I wish, how I'm thinking, I wish, or how it's so hard to say what I'm about to say. I wish that you were alive. And then the way he sang Vivieras. Como quisiera que tu vivieras. It almost felt like he choked up on that word. And then he also brought a good amount of rasp and just a bit of crack in that word. Let's talk about the way he sang amándonos. I love how he sat on that second syllable. So the word amándonos has the stress on the second syllable. It's not amándonos, it's not amándonos, it's amándonos. So the way he sat on that second syllable was nice because it stressed that syllable, which is proper according to the way that it's pronounced. But also what I liked was how he closed it off by sitting on the N and then slowing the rest of the word down, looking up, opening up his arms. Para seguir it was just too perfect. It was too perfect. Okay, I feel like expression is just going to be the theme of this video because it's so dang good. So the next line I want to talk about is 
Oscura soledad estoy viviendo. La misma soledad de tu sepulcro, mamá. Dark loneliness I'm living. The same solitude of your grave, mom. Oh my god. So now that we've returned to this phrase, we've also got a similar line that we had in the chorus. He starts on E4 and then jumps up to that A. Oh, school! And he holds that note for quite a bit. And not only that, the melody continues and hits that note a couple of other times, making it that much more difficult. This is difficult because of where it sits within the range. And he's bringing up so much chest voice up here. And so it doesn't really give you a chance to take a break and either just dip within your lower register so you're not singing that high for that long, or to even just have like a bar where you have a second to rest and then prep for those high notes. And what I love about this line too is the ending the way he's saying mama oh my god he didn't breathe before mama there is a comma in the translation but the fact that he didn't breathe it sounded like there was so much desperation in his voice and i like how that phrase ended on that minor third jump on mama from c sharp four to e natural four i don't know i just thought that was really beautiful Wow, 
wow, wow, wow, wow, wow. Is that a tear jerker or what? Wow, you all. Okay, I just discovered this was a thing in one other video. So this is the second instance I've seen this. When you hover over the timeline of this video, the most replayed is everything up until three minutes and 30 seconds. So from zero seconds to three minutes and 30 seconds, that is the most replayed. I don't know if you understand how incredible that is because getting someone to engage in your videos for 50% or more of the time is quite an accomplishment. And this is not only showing that, but it's showing that it's the most replayed all it's like more than half of the song that's really incredible man the part where the instrumentation went quiet they went pretty piano and that allowed his voice to shine through even more than it already was I'm on it, I think added a heightened level of drama to the song. Now this song is already very dramatic. One with the lyrics and then two with the way that he's able to deliver the text. But then when you add dynamics within the instrumentation to support the emotional journey of the text, it makes everything that much better. And I think he did a beautiful job too on the part where the instrumentation went piano because that is a very scary moment for a lot of singers. Not only does it put any flaw that you may have within your vocal technique on display, but it also makes it nerve wracking because you're not as dependent, let's say, on the backing of the instrumentation. It's easy to rely on the sounds that you're hearing with the instrumentation and use that as your confidence boost, let's say, as you're singing. But when that drops out or goes pretty piano and it's all on you, it makes it a very vulnerable moment. Not only that, as we talked about, this song is hard to sing, especially as the person who wrote this song and as a grieving son. That's not easy to do. So adding all of that on top just, I think, makes the awe factor of the fact that he was able to get through it and not only get through it, but sound phenomenal and expressive while doing it that much more intense. If you liked all that you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and comment down below what artist from your country you would like me to do a performance analysis on. Lastly, make sure to check out the description box for ways you can keep in touch with me, get access to exclusive perks, and or check out the Soprano Notes blog. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye!